Okay, so in this problem, we're told the two forces, F1 and F2, are shown in this figure. And then and we have another figure here. And so we're told that they act on an 18.5 kilogram object on a frictionless tabletop. If F1 is 10.2 newtons and F2 is 16 newtons, find the net force on the object in acceleration for A and B. So basically, we're going to be finding the acceleration and net force for these two uh, figures here. So how do we do this? So the way you find the net force is you're going to sum up the forces in the x and then you're going to sum up the forces in the y so when i'm referring to the x we're going to find all the forces along this axis and then for y we're going to find all the forces on this axis and we're going to add them up and then the way you find the net force is we can call this fn it's equal to the square root of the sum of the forces in the x squared plus the sum of the forces in the y squared so this is the formula we're going to use and so that's how we find the net force in order to find the acceleration though we know F equals MA, so we can just divide the force by the given mass, which we're told is um, 18.5 kg. So we would just divide whatever value we find here by uh, the mass, and that will give us our acceleration. So let's go ahead and start with A. So let's first find all the forces in the X. So if we look here, we know F1, they tell us, is 10.2 newtons. And if we look on the X axis, uh, we know it's along it. And so whenever something goes to the left, you want to denote it as negative. And when it's uh, downwards, it's also negative. But if it's to the right, it's positive. Or if it's up, it's positive. So in the x direction here, f of x, since it's the only force acting in the x direction, since this one is along the y direction, there's no other forces besides this one in the x. So f of x is just equal to f1, which in this case is 10.2. Um, keep in mind, it would, you would write it as negative 10.2 newtons because it's to the left. But we're going to plug the value in here and square it, so it doesn't actually change. Since if you square a negative, it's, it's just a positive value. Um, and then if we look in the y direction here, what force do we have acting the y? So this one's only in the x direction. So the only one along this y-axis here is F2, which is 16. So the first one's pretty easy because it only has forces along each direction. But if you look at this one right here and 2, it's not along the x or y. So we have to split that one up into its components. But uh, yeah, so this is 16 newtons here. So if we plug it in, uh, you're going to do f of n equals the square root. Let me zoom out here. The square root of 10.2 squared plus 16 squared. So yeah, let's go ahead and see. So when you do that, you should find it equals 18.87 newtons. So this is going to be the net force acting on it right here. So that's that. And then if we want to find the acceleration, as I said before, Fn is going to be equal to Ma. So you would just divide by the mass. So the net force is 18.87 newtons. And then you divide by 18.5 kg. So let me zoom out a bit here. So 18.5 kg. And you're going to see it's about 1.03 meters per second squared. So this would be your answer to A. So you have your uh, net force acting on it and your acceleration. So yeah, so that's basically the idea. So if we look at B here, it's going to be a little bit trickier because this one right here is not along the X or Y. And when you do it, you sum the forces in that direction. So which means we have to convert this force into its components along the X this way and along the Y this way. So how do we do that? So um, let me do it over here. So. Uh, so we want to sum the forces in the x. So basically, we know this one's just along the y. So it doesn't have an x component. So I'm going to call it fx. We're going to sum it. So along, we have some of the forces in the x and some of the forces in the y. So if we look in the y, this one's already in the y. So we just want to add it in here. So it's 16 newtons, and since it's upwards, it's positive. And then this one right here, we got to break into its x and y components in order to add it up. So how do we do that? So the way you do that is by... Uh, looking at it like a triangle, or that's how I generally recommend it. So I'm going to redraw this right here like this. So we have this. And just imagine this is the triangle right here. So it's kind of like this. I tried to do this as a triangle. So what is this angle here? So notice this is 120 degrees. Uh, they label it for us. But I noticed that this is 90. And so if that's 90, this has to add up to 30 to get to the 120. So I know this angle is just 30 degrees. And so now we know that's 30. And then we know the magnitude of this force, F1, they label it for us, is 10.2 newtons. So we're trying to find the x and y components. And 
when you do it the triangle, it's easy to see that this right here is the X component and this is the Y. So we want to solve for these two values based on this triangle. And so how do we do that? So you're going to take, uh, we're going to use trig functions. So uh, we are going to use the trig, uh, trig function cosine and sine. So we know the cosine of an angle. It's easier just to see. So cosine of 30 is, what is cosine? So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is the side, this side, and the hypotenuse is this side. So it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So if you look at this, if we want to find x, all we'd have to do is multiply it by 10.2. And now we have our x component, because x is equal to 10.2 cosine of 30. And so that's going to be the x component of this force, F1. So when we sum the force in the x, we would add this there. And then we want to find the y, though. How do we find the y? So instead of using cos, you're actually going to use sine. So the sine of 30 in this case, sine is opposite of the angle, opposite over hypotenuse. So it's just going to be y over 10.2. So multiplying both sides, you get 10.2 sine of 30. So if you see, generally the way you break it down is you would say F1x. So the x component of the force F1 right here is this right here, So which is this. So 10.2 cosine of 30. And then F2, F, uh, 1y, the y one, is 10.2 sine of 30. But keep in mind, if we look at our graph, the way we want to label it, is notice that I said forces to the right are positive, forces up are positive, and then down into the left are negative. So this would be positive, this would be positive, negative, negative. So notice the force is going this way. And if you look at the components, the x component would be going this way, right? We can see that this way. But then it's going down. So our y component is actually negative because it's going down. So you would say F1y is actually uh, negative 10.2. And so this actually matters. The reason on the last one it didn't matter is because it was by itself. But the way we find it, these two values here, is by summing the forces, right? We sum the forces here. So when we add all the forces in the y, we have this 16 from F2, but then we have another component in the y, which is from this F1 force, which is negative. So it's actually going to change the value. So if we did positive there, it wouldn't have worked. So if we plug that in there, uh, you see we have... Now the force is in the y. We have the y, this one, the y component of this, and then the only force in the x is just this value. And this one is positive because we know it goes to the right. So, uh, yeah, so when we add these up, or this one doesn't change, but these will. Uh, but yeah, so you're going to want to go ahead and subtract that. So let me go ahead and do that. So you're going to find that 10.2 uh, cosine of 30 is about 8.83 newtons. This right here, so this is going to be equal to 16 minus 10.2 sine of 30 is 5.1. So this equals about 10.9. So these are our F and Y that we plug into this formula now. So you saw the difference here. This one, we just had to add these up because they were already in the X and Y and just put them in. And they were the only ones. So when we sum it, uh, they're, they're, they're just by themselves. But this one, we had to add the Y because there were two components in the y, this one and the y component of this. But yeah. So now what we can do is fn equals uh, square root of these two values. So your x and your y. So 8.83 squared plus 10.9 squared. Cool. So when you do this, you're going to get 14.02 newtons. So 14.02 newtons, and then uh, we want to find the acceleration. So F equals MA again, divided by the mass. So our force was 14.02, divided by, uh, I believe it is 18.5 kg. Let's move it over a bit. And you're going to get 0.758 meters per second squared. So this is your acceleration, 0.758 meters per second squared. So you have the net force for the second one here and the acceleration. So these would be your answers to B, right? So net force, acceleration, and then acceleration, net force for A. Uh, but yeah, so just keep in mind what you do is you sum the forces um, in the X and Y, and then you're just going to use this formula to find uh, the net force. 
And yeah, so uh, these are going to be your answers. And hopefully you found this useful.